Hello, everyone. It's me, Andrew. I'm here in lovely Ligonier. I'm in our home. Uh, I'm actually in William's office. Uh, it's been a busy, busy day today. Today is our uh, takeover day for the great bee extravaganza. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, head on over to the great bee extravaganza group and you'll see. Let me see if I have a banner for for that. I don't know if I do. Um, I don't think I do. Well, here you go. Here's the great beat extravaganza. So I thought today for our live at five, I would do, let me adjust this a little bit. It's been a minute since I've done one here. So it's uh, yeah, we've been rushing around, rushing around. So I was going to do this demo at the cottage because that's where my studio is now. However, all the stuff that I said that I would be demoing is all stuff that's here and is kind of quasi packed up. Uh, so that makes it extra exciting to try to do something somewhere else with stuff that's somewhere else that's kind of available, but not really available. So it is what it is. We're going to roll with it. And I think we're going to have fun today. Um, yeah. So let me turn the comments on in my section. Uh, let me know where you're tuning in. Say hello and say where you're uh, tuning in from. Uh, I did want to do a little bit of housekeeping. So if you haven't seen, today is our take takeover day in the Great Beat Extravaganza. So we've been posting things since midnight last night. William did a, um, a store tour of Allegory Gallery, our brick and mortar. After this video, which is going to be relatively short in theory, we're going to do a tour of Star Cottage Studio. If you don't know what Star Cottage Studio, it's probably our most ambitious project yet. Um, and we took an old, um, hundred year old schoolhouse and we're turning part of it into my studio. And we're turning the rest into the shipping department for Allegory Gallery. And we've got some other fun things that we're planning there as well. Um, I will say that even though we've been frantically working, 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 working to prepare for our takeover day and for the tour, it's still a construction site. And it looks like um, my beads exploded everywhere. And really what it is, is um, uh, I packed probably not the best way. I did it as quickly as possible. And now I am, which still took a long time and it's still not done, but uh, I'm now uh, reaping the consequences of that decision, which basically means I have to take everything out of the boxes and then reorganize everything there. Luckily, there's nothing there. You know, there's no, there's not a lot of furniture in the room that I'm doing this in. So I can kind of, you know, spread everything out. And I also have super bad allergies today. So if you hear me snorching in the background, that's what it is. Um, so yeah. So let's see who's tuned in today. June is watching. Hey, June. Me Marianne is watching. Hey, Marianne. Renee. Uh, she said, LOL, you are a hot mess, Andrew, with stuff everywhere. Um, yeah, well, it is what it is. Life of the artist. Um, I would like to be one of those people that has everything, you know, like neatly organized and everything has a place and everything has a home. And believe it or not, when I used to work in the restaurant industry, I was like super organized with that. And Everything had a place and there was systems and, and everything else. But then when I'm working for myself, apparently I believe in the nightmare organizing system, which means only you know where, where things are in the controlled chaos. 
And so, like, William, he's like, where's the screwdriver last night? Well, we were, because we were at the cottage pretty late working. And he's like, where's the screwdriver? I said, go into the concrete room, make a left on the step in the pile that's uh, the green pile of beads. Uh, it's stuck there right after one foot past the step. And he found it right away. But if it was left up just to him finding it, he would have never found it because um, as you'll see, uh, that step, one step up into the schoolhouse part is a disaster station. But, oh, well, I know where stuff is, so, and it will get better. So it is what it is. Uh, Suzanne says hello from the Big Easy. Norma says hi. Um, Shakita says hello, Andrew. Hello. Facebook user says, hey, Andrew, that's Brooke, I'm guessing. Um, you know, I don't know what's up with um, StreamYard today because um, I had to sign back in and I noticed that a couple people were having issues with their names popping up. Um, and so I don't know. I wish I knew. I'd probably be uh, a millionaire or more if I knew the answers to that question. Um, but, you know, I'm just going to roll with it. Susan says, I am also in lovely Ligonier. Yeah, Susan's across the street. She's our neighbor. Um, Diane says, hello from very warm Arizona. Um, it is not warm here. Well, it's a little bit warmer than it was last night. Um, I was shivering my behind off trying to get everything ready. Um, and the one room that used to be my studio, um, it doesn't really have uh, uh, good heat in that room. So it was chilly, willy. And the heater I had um, to get going in that room, it just wasn't kicking. So I was like, oh, well, I'll prop the door up and hope the cats don't try to run in while I'm trying to pack everything up, which of course they did. And then I was like, no, stop, don't touch my things. And they're just like, no, stop, don't move your mouth so much. Um, so that is what it is. Um, Renee says, you sound just like me. Why do we have to do the to ourselves? Yeah, I think once the cottage, once we've actually had time in the cottage, um, and like dedicated time, it'll get a lot more streamlined. Um, because when we basically over the winter, we couldn't do a ton of work um, just because, um, you know, it's winter and there's like snow on the ground and all that. So we didn't really get a chance to do as much as we would have liked. I still think we got a ton done, but not as much as we would have liked. But um, with that being said, um, right afterwards, I became, I got appointed to the board of Touchstone, which I'm not sure they knew what they were signing up for. Um, because I was in a meeting last night, maybe it was last night. Um, and I was like, yeah, make sure to give me a script away I can and cannot say, because I don't want to have diarrhea of the mouse and uh, be uh uh, talking out a term and the one dude his eyes got like big as a saucer um i was like wow surprise surprise y'all apparently i have a very graphic way of describing life um so yeah and then after a touchstone i became the metal arts res or the artist in residence for the metal studio at contemporary craft and originally we were gonna to do tours at Touchstone and Contemporary Craft today for our takeover day because they are such a big part of my life right now. Um, but each of those are an hour away in different directions. So I was like, I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, which oddly enough, we form like a, a triangle of creativity because they're an hour from each other and I'm an hour from Pittsburgh, and I'm also an hour from Farmington. So we make like the Bermuda Triangle of creativity and crafting. Who's in the middle? I, I need to look at a map and then be like, 
maybe in the middle there's like some kind of nexus of power wouldn't that be fun um so anyways so once i took on those extra jobs we really i've been running here running there running everywhere so we haven't really had a chance to uh really 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 get um organized um a little bit you know out of necessity mostly but you know it is what it is and i'm going to keep saying that i guess this is the 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 motto it is what it is uh for 2022 and she should make that into a t-shirt or we'll just roll with it um robin says hi hi robin um I'm guessing Brooks says killer allergies for me too this year. Uh, could be somebody else. It's a Facebook user. If you haven't had a chance and this is somebody else, go to um, the description of this video, especially if you're in one of the Facebook groups. And it will say, uh, log in to StreamYard. And that's only so that they know who's who. Otherwise, on my end, it only shows up as Facebook user which I just assume that you're all one person, uh, which is probably, you know, not actually the way it is, but it is what it is. Um, so Amanda, um, Amanda says, hi. All right. <sighs> so, and Facebook user said, love the video of the store this morning. Oh, good. Um, they work really hard on cleaning up for the store tour so that's good so i'm going to flip the camera around so we can get to work but also so i can blow my notes off camera nice you can tell it you can see it's glistening in my eyes um I was like, this is going to be a great, 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 great video of snot dripping out of my face. Um, so please enjoy. All right. So today for this project, um, I've done a lot of um, tutorials over the years since we got our laser on how to embellish and add color and texture to our wooden pendants. Um, I thought I would do that um, again here because it's a, it's something that uh, you can always add something to. Um, and I'm gonna show some secrets that I haven't shown before. So hopefully you'll stay tuned um, for that. And if you are on YouTube, be, may, be sure to subscribe to YouTube a YouTube channel. We do have a giveaway going in, going on in the Great Beat Extravaganza. And the way to enter that giveaway is to be subscribed and to say what video that you is your favorite or what uh, video intrigues you the most in case you haven't seen our videos before. But you have to be a subscriber to be entered to win that. And it's a $50 uh, gift certificate, which I think is nice. You know, you, you uh, one of the things that I get asked a lot um, is uh, how do you win things all the time? Because I win a lot of stuff a lot of time. And um, the way that I do that is because I enter to win. Um, and you'll never win. You automatically won't win if you don't enter. So if you enter, you never know. Maybe you You'll randomly get picked. Maybe you won't. Um, during the uh, earlier today, we had some uh, scavenger hunts, which I thought were a lot of fun. And hopefully all of you enjoyed those out there. You're going to be uh, the people who played along are going to be deeply, deeply uh, uh, familiar with our website because we hid that little picture of Dolly in there. We hid a couple pictures, but... There's only one right answer to that question. And uh, I believe somebody won it, um, but we'll have to go back and check. I've been running around. I haven't had a chance to check. And then William had a scavenger hunt as well. And uh, there are pictures of Shara hidden around there. 
Um, and as with that, uh, as with the Dolly kind of scavenger hunt, there's only one right answer. And I think that one too got one, uh, but I'll have to double check on that. All right, let me put the camera back on because I don't always see what people are saying. All right. Helena says, hi from Walden, New York. Scavenger hunt was fun. Oh, good. I'm glad people liked it. We were up late, 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 late um, working on that. So if you didn't see, I have these pendants called um, Heart Desire. Um, Heart's Desire. This is a fundraiser that we have going for uh, Star Cottage Studio. Um, and I thought I was done, uh, but I keep finding these hearts. Um, apparently, I made a bunch of them and don't know how to count um, because originally I made 100 hearts. Um, I did a 100 heart marathon excuse me, and I must have made like 200. And I think what happened is I made some and then William made some and then I forgot I made some and then William made some more. And because we honestly have not made more of these hearts, they just keep appearing. So um, yeah. So anyways, I thought I was done with the series um, and was ready to move on, but I had some, one, some left over. So um, you know, I don't, I don't like to waste stuff. So I was like, okay, I'll just do a couple more. So I, I thought, I honestly thought that these were it, that these were the last four. And then guess what I found today? Three more. I says, what is it? Too bad it's not like dollar bills making babies because these things keep popping up like a rabbit babies, you know? Uh, anyway, so I thought I would show you these. This is not in the online store yet because I just finished it the other night. Uh, but this is part of the new kind of wave. Um, before I did them kind of in a rainbow color palette um, and with a limited palette for most of them. And then I kind of got bored of doing a limited palette. So I started adding uh, all the colors and then um, I didn't do, um, I only did touches of metallics. Um, and then as you see here, I went for the gold for adding metallics because these are shiny. These are, you know, if you get stranded on a deserted island and you have this in your back pocket, you can flag down help because it's super reflective and fun like that. And you can like entrance yourself and make yourself feel less uh, disasperated by being washed ashore on the deserted island, or maybe you like it. You know, I some a lot of times I'm I w I fantasize about what it would be like to be off on my own on the deserted island. You know, William and the cats can come visit, but sometimes I think about what it would be like to be like you know. But I you know I think that's because I grew up reading. Uh, a lot of stories in school about the abandonment of children and them having to survive. Like, you you know, Island of the Blue Dolphin, remember that one? Or My Side of the Mountain. Uh, and there was another one, Hatchet, uh, by uh, uh, Paulson. Is it Brian Paulson? I can't remember. But anyway, so there's all these books about how, uh, how to be like off on your own. And I was like, what they trying to tell us, you know, maybe that's what they were trying to tell us. Cause that was like the era of the latchkey kid. I told one of the kids that came in the store about how like my parents gave me a set of keys and like, I walked to school back and forth by myself. Uh, and it was like a mile away and, um, uh, you know, and, uh, and how I had a key and I would like go in the house and make my own snacks and, uh, you know, do stuff like that. Go, go, uh, ride my bike to the Seven Eleven, which was even further away. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, the kids' eyes look like like they're thunderstruck, and they're like, "Where was your parents?" And I was like, "I guess they were working." Um, and and then I started working for them. So then, you know, 
uh, then that leisurely ex uh, time was not as much as I would have liked, but you know, well, whatever. All right. Oh, Lorraine is on. Howdy. Helena's is beautiful. Thanks. Marianne but they're trying to help you get your heart's desire. Correct, Marianne. I got a lot of heart's desire. I got a lot of desire in my heart. So um, William forbade me to talk about the bathroom situation at the cottage. So I'm not going to go into details. And I'm not going to say a word that starts with P and also ends with P and has two O's in it. I'm not going to talk about that. Um, but I would dearly, dearly, dearly love to finally get that incinerator toilet so that um, my, work my work is not interrupted by trips to the sheets down the road, which is not too bad, though I kind of, I kind of like go try to make disguise myself so that I'm like incognito. So they're not like, here he go again, back again. Um, you know, I should have like, a, uh, 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 I do have a couple wigs. I should bust them out somewhere. Um, I have this like, uh, wig from the seventies and it makes me look like I, like I have blonde hair with sideburns, uh, good times. Anyways, Brooke says, I hadn't read the second scavenger hunt post and thought they were duplicates. That's why I posted my answer twice. Oh, well, I think you won one, I think. I don't know. But I have to double check on that. Um, hey, Teresa. Teresa's joining in. Facebook says, that sounds normal to me. Diane Davis says, Laughing emoji, laughing emoji, laughing, crying emoji. You know what's up? She She's come to the cottage. I thought we were going to have to roll her out on the, um, get the life flight from laughing too hard. Because apparently I go into co comedy hour. Usually I'm like, let's talk about generational trauma in our feelings. And then apparently, um, then I go into my stand up routine which is probably a coping mechanism. You know, humor makes the, the medicine go down or whatever. But anyways, uh, yeah. So I'm going to finish up these. And apparently I'm going to finish up these sometime in the future at an undisclosed time because apparently I'm super busy. So on tomorrow, we are going to be Picking up some of our pewter beads. Exciting. You'll find out more about that later. I'm not going to tell everything right now, but um, tune in tonight, I think, at 10, 10 Eastern time, and we'll have a, a, a reveal of uh, things. Anyways, so and then on Thursday, I'm going to be going and picking up some storage containers and then going to Contemporary Craft. And I have a class on enameling there. And then Friday, we have our preview night. So I will be getting ready for that for the Great Beat Extravaganza and making sure that all of the kits and everything are ready. And then on Saturday, we're going to be going to doing our presentation bright and early. Um, we're going to be kicking off the Great Beat Extravaganza, the Spring Fling Great Beat Extravaganza. And it's our, uh, I believe it's a one year that, uh, since our last Spring Fling. I don't know. It seems like we've done a bunch of these uh, at this point. Uh, but yeah, so we'll be doing that. And then in the evening, I'm going to be helping out at Contemporary Craft in the Out of Hand Gala which is a fundraiser for Contemporary Craft. It's their 50th year that they're celebrating. It's their gold year. Everything's 50 year. Like Touchstone, they're celebrating their 50 year. Contemporary Craft is celebrating their 50th year. Uh, Disney is celebrating their 50 year. I don't have anything to do with Disney, but, um, you know, I guess something was in the water. Um, and so, yeah, so I'll be there helping make pins, which I'm a little bit dubious of. They're called fibulas. And I can just imagine drunk people uh, playing with wire. Uh, so um, I'm going to wear my safety glasses 
just in case. So I'm not a uh, one-eyed Andrew after the event. Um, so we'll be doing that. And then I think on Sunday, we're going to be continuing with a great beat extravaganza. And then, um, and then I don't know, maybe uh, pass out from running ourselves ragged. All right. And I'm supposed to be doing a painting demo or something now. But instead, I'm giving you the intimate details of my calendar. Um, so there you go. Um, Helena says the outhouse. Yeah, I, um, I, I tried to clean the outhouse and I gave up. I was like, uh, uh, the squirrels apparently, um, had a party. I wasn't invited. Um, and it looks like they, they got wild and they broke out all their party food. And it's like, uh, the floor of the outhouse is covered in acorn shells. And I was like, Ah, uh, you know. So, anyways, they had a party. I didn't get invited. It's my own. It's my outhouse, and they're just gonna wreck it, Ralph, and have fun without me. There's Gilbert. He wants to paint. He, we um joke around that he. It's his life ambition to become the little artist cat. Um, because I have this book that's like it's called Cats That Paint, and so I show it to him, and I can tell that he he's like. That could be me, Dad. That could be me. Susan says, I have to, um, I have seen that blonde wig, I, or I have to see that blonde wig. I wore it for Halloween one day or for uh, for the porch party when Barb and um, her husband came, and Jeff came over. Um, they have a, the people who we bought the house from, their kids, they come over. And by kids, I mean they're adult kids. Um, they come over and we have a party on our porch for Halloween. And it's nice because, um, you know, I feel like it's good to stay connected with, uh, you know, the people. I don't know. I, I don't know. I guess I'm funny like that. Because, like, when they, when we bought the house, I was like, can I have a picture of your family? And they were like, oh... Um, but I think it was nice because it's one of those things where uh, it kind of you you kind of have that that lineage or that that legacy. And I always like to know, like when we got the cottage, it's revealing secrets. Like when they redid the floors, they found a bunch of newspaper clippings that I guess were stuffed in the floor to make it level. Um, and so when they redid the floors, um, we got to see some of those newspaper clippings, and I guess they redid the floor in the 60s. But anyway, it was pretty cool. Uh, Michelle says, hi. Michelle says, back on the YouTube. Teresa says, Carnival Cruise 50. I've never taken a cruise. Um, I keep, my friend Heather, she... Uh, organizes the bead cruise, but I've never been invited so um, to teach. But I don't know. I guess uh, you know. And then with COVID, you know. But whatever. Not to pressure Heather, but maybe I'll go as a as a visitor one day. We'll see. Um, Susan says they had a meeting of their cruise ships, the East and West Coast. They passed each other. That's cool. Susan said, at least they brought their own uh, nuts. Yeah. Suzanne says, Gilbert. Karen says, hello. Hi, Karen. It's been a while. Teresa says, Susan, we are scheduled on the legend for meetup since two years ago. But Carnival said no masks for most events, so we canceled. Yeah, that's kind of the, you know, you have to be safe and... um do what you think is best. All right. So without further ado, um, we're going to get this painting project going. Um, I need a painting palette. Um, and this is my very expensive. It's so expensive. Actually not. LOL. Um, it's the top for a Chinese uh, takeout container. Um, I think those are endlessly useful. You know, uh, you give them a good wash and they're, they're basically our Tupperware now. I don't have to buy any Tupperware. 
um that we did we went and got um these fancy glass containers from the ikea but anyways more paintings uh palettes for me uh when this gets too too thick and too covered the nice thing about acrylic is that it uh when it uh it does not necessarily bond to plastic unless you uh prepare it to do so so you can just peel this right off and you have a fresh new coat one thing that i do recommend if you aren't comfortable painting and mixing colors yet is to use something with a white background um, and if you're going to use this, this is usually like a transparent, clear color. You can always just take and put paint down white and let that dry completely and then use that. Or you can put something white underneath and you can sandwich that like a piece of, of um, tissue and sandwich the two um, tops together so that you get a clearer uh um, understanding of your colors and what they're doing. When you have all this action going on, sometimes it tricks your eyes and there's something called a cast shadow. And the cast shadow is colors that reflect off of one another. And so it can trick your eye. Um, but uh, I've been painting so long that um, I kind of know what I'm, what colors make what. So I, uh, once you know the rules, you can kind of break them. But I do recommend if you're not comfortable mixing uh, paints, use a white background and that will help uh, when you're mixing colors. Diane says, cruises freak me out. I don't like being out on the open ocean like that. I love the ocean, but I love it from the shore. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it might be neat. Um, I've never been on one, so I don't know. One of William's friends, he did this backpacking trip from Asia to America, and um, he didn't fly. He only took either um, an automobile or a boat, um, but he didn't fly anywhere. And so to cross the Atlantic Ocean... Uh, he went in a cargo ship that they rented out rooms for. It's pretty wild. He actually made a book um, about his trip, and I was like, that's cool. Um, but it takes a long time. It takes a couple weeks, I think, from getting from one place to another. So I guess, you know, if you want your island of solitude, maybe that's, that's how to do it. Become a captain of a transatlantic uh, vessel, you know? You have uh, lots of time to yourself to do the crafts. All right, Lorraine says, they were great for many things. Uh, uh, pop it out. I don't wanna do it yet. It's not, it's not thick enough. Maybe, I'll do it. Sometimes I have an X-Acto knife, which sometimes I have handy. There you go. Isn't that neat? And then I guess you could do something with this. Um, for me, though, we have a house with cats, so there's cat hairs embedded in it. So I don't know about that. But, um, yeah, I think it's pretty neat. Um, so that's how um, I have a fresh new palette now. One thing, though, is I cracked this on accident, so... Oops, I might have to get a brand new. I might have to splurge on a new palette, y'all, because I made a little, I don't know if you can see that. Maybe I put it back in there. There you go. Um, let's see, Susan says, went on one cruise with seasick, never again. Um, yeah, you know. That happens. All right. So um, if you do have a crack like this, if you're going to do any washy effects, like with really loose layers of paint, it's probably not going to work out in your favor. 
So uh, just get another one. But I don't want to interrupt the flow of our little comedy hour because we got stuff to do. Um, so here are the wooden pendants. Um, we recently came out with a line of acrylic pendants. I haven't played around too much with adding color to those yet. Um, because um, I just don't have enough hours in the day yet. Um, plus, there are such pretty colors that, um, you know, they look nice the way they are. But you could definitely embellish them. Now, one of the, the easy, the fastest, the get it done sort of way is vintage patina pa patina paint um i am a little bit sad that they discontinued this line they started a new line but it's a little bit the formula is a little bit different but this this is uh my kind of ride or die because it goes on so many different surfaces um and metal wood plastic all kinds of stuff um, and you can heat set those and they are really 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 durable um, I heat set some pieces, um, I made some earrings, I think, last week. Um, we did a little, uh, chat time at the cottage, and, um, after chatting, then we, um, made some earrings. My sister, Cynthia, she was like, here, do this. Um, I, I said, you want to do a creative challenge, name a couple things, and I'll make it. And she said, teal and earrings. So I was like, okay. And then, so I made some. And then I put the vintage patina paints to paint my metal and I heat set it. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to scrub off and sand the top so that you can see some of the design underneath. And uh, it was really cooked on. So I like that. That's good. That for me, you know, that's a sign of uh, it's durable. And if I want to do that, I, I can always distress it before I heat set it. And that way, it doesn't have that full adhesion that um, normally happens after you heat set it. So if you are going to distress your pieces and kind of buff off the, the highlights, um, do it before you heat set it, and you'll have much more success. And uh, yeah, so this is the easy way. Michelle says, never been on a cruise. Harry says, hello, Andrew. Hey, Harry. Um, Lorraine says, they came out great. Thanks. So this patina paint, you can just uh, kind of set it and forget it. And we'll do one really quick um, because we're here. Why not? I got this. I This accidentally fell out of my, my carry caddy. So that's why we have one color of vintage patina paints in the house. I feel slightly frantic. I'm like, what am I going to do with myself? But then I have to rest assured I have to uh, reassure myself that we have more colors at the store if I need it. Uh, but once those are sold out, we'll probably never be able to get them anymore. So the hoarder in me wants to go and drive to New Jersey where they manufacture them and like knock on the door and be like, can I go through your warehouse, please? Let me go through your warehouse. I'll give you like some candy, you know, maybe. I don't know. Um, but I want to go and get all the leftovers that they have so that I can stockpile it in case for when I need this 20 years from now. The thing is, is that these are so good that they last forever. And so, um, so yeah. Um, so I'm just going to squeeze them out. Oh, looky there. I didn't have to stab the hole. Um, I, when you're working with vintage patina paints, I always like to use a dry brush. Don't use a wet brush. It's tempting to go dip down in the water. But I found personally, my you know, what I've seen is that it makes it curdle. Um, and I don't know if it's other people's experience, if this is a real thing, or if I'm just tripping or what. But um I feel like if you work with this medium, it has a, uh, a decoagulant or whatever it is, what you call it, um, that makes it not gum up and also adheres. So, uh, you know, 
uh, and it reacts with water. So that, I don't know if that's real or not. If you do need to thin those, they do have um, mediums. They have a gel or they have a gloss medium and they have a matte medium that's specifically designed for vintage patina paints. And those work really well to thin the paints um, and uh, get them uh, thinner layers if you want that. So it's an extender also, and you can do different things. You can do coatings on it to seal stuff up. I like to use those for when I'm doing my resin pieces. What I do with the resin pieces is that um, I will, because um, the uh, usually when I make a master, I'll use the glass for the eyes, and you'll see that later when I do a demo on polymer clay, which I'm also not set up for at the cottage, but we're going to do it anyway because I like to haul stuff over there when I'm trying not to get sweaty and dirty. I'm like, you know what would be fun? Do the craft there that I don't have any of the equipment set up because that will force me to do, force me to do it, I guess. Uh, that's not what I thought, you know, in theory, that sounds like a good plan. You know, it's like when you invite company over, uh, and then you have to clean the house. So maybe that's like my brain subconsciously getting this like kick fired in there. All right. So I don't have my heat gun here. It's at the cottage. So we're gonna have to let nature take its course and let it dry naturally. Luckily for us, this dries extremely quickly. So I actually have to wash this brush before it dries on the brush because then it will not be a brush anymore. It will be a texture tool. And then I always wipe the excess off on a rack. See y'all, I brought the paper towels. Normally I forget the paper towels and then I'd be having to use like my shirt or my snot rag. Um, so here you go, uh, for the new people, they're like, oh my word, what I sign up for? I didn't know this was in the GBE. Um, you, you know what the people at that, at that, uh, communications meeting last night, they were like, oh my word, we're going to have to file a report about this. No, I hope not. Well, you know. Uh, Susan says, and the mat is mat. One thing I will say about the mat medium is you have to shake it, uh, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Otherwise, it's not going to be as matte. It will be shiny. Um, but if you shake it up really good and it's a fresh bottle, um, then it will be super matte, which is delightful. But um, otherwise, it will. It, uh, these these patina paints have. Uh, a tendency to separate. And that does not necessarily mean they are bad. It just is the nature of how this, the, the formula. So you, there's a little ball in there and you have to shake the heck out of it. And that will, um, you know, that redistributes all the color or all the matte kind of, uh, uh, you know, I don't actually know what, what 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 they use to make the mat i'm assuming um when i've done made my own mat mediums i used a little bit of um calcium carbonate and a little bit of marble dust just a little bit and then that helped um make things more matte so maybe it's the same kind of concoction uh lorraine says yes i just discovered that i didn't know what I had done wrong. So um, Facebook user says, how do you heat set it? So if you use a heat gun or an embossing gun, you just go over it um, and heat it up. Or you can set an oven uh, for um, about 200 or so. You can go probably up to 275 because I've done it on polymer. Um, but it does smell if you do it in an oven. So what I recommend is get a dedicated craft oven. They're super cheap. I got ours at the thrift store and it served us for many years. I actually have two just in case when we have a class, 
One thing you do want to do if you get a used um, toaster oven is get one of those cheapy um, uh, oven thermometers. You you know you can it's in that aisle that people don't ever go to, into at uh, Walmart. Um, but if you get that um, oven thermometer, uh, if there is any fluctuations in your in your oven, it will um, then then you can adjust it appropriately. You know, sometimes the knobs fall off, and then uh, who knows what happens? They get kind of messed up with the the um, the temperature. Now I'm going to tell you a secret. And it also makes your house smell delightful. So if you want to know the secret, let me know. Say yes in the comments. Let me know if you're interested in secret techniques of not only polymer clay, but this is a good thing to know. Maybe you already know, so you don't need to know the secret. But let me, let me know in the comments. Or push the heart sign or the uh, thumbs up sign if you're on Facebook. Lorraine says, moved over to YouTube. Oh, I see a couple people want to know the secret. June says she wants to know. Uh, I'm guessing that's Brooke says she wants to know. Susan says she wants to know. Or Suzanne says she wants to know. And Robin said yes. All right, I'll tell you. So get a baking sheet or whatever you're putting in there and cover it with an even layer of coconut shavings. You know the kind that they get for the Christmas cookies? I use it for everything, but get um, some of those shaved coconut flakes and put an even layer in the bottom of your cookie sheet and then set your oven to um, to uh, the temperature that you're looking for. So usually it's 275, depending on the brand of polymer clay that you're using, and then let it go. Um, and what this does is if there are hot spots, sometimes coils in your oven can get whacked um, and they bulge out or they cut, they double coil and there's hot spots in your oven. Um, and what happens is sometimes, because what I noticed is sometimes I used to do a lot of production for polymer clay. So I had our home oven in the apartment and there were always ones that turned out a little bit toasty. There are always a, there's always a one or two, and I just could not figure out for the life of me. I was like, everybody else turned out good. How come there's always the one, the one bad kid over here? And what we realized is that there was a hot spot in the oven. So whenever I put the cookie sheet in, I just didn't put anything in that in that little quadrant. And the, you know, then I didn't have to do play a rescue 911 William Shatner style to try to correct it with paints and stuff. Like I did these things called podlings. I actually have a couple that we might put up for sale this weekend if people are interested in that. But um, I made these little podlings and there was always one that looked like it got scorched earth. And I was like, what the heck? You know, it's like, ah, you go through all that trouble. It's like one time I was teaching a uh, class with Cynthia in Port, and in Port Townsend. And we used to do this, uh, this show called uh, Art Fest. And it, it was really wonderful. They took over the naval base there. And uh, they turned, you know, it was all these different crafters and people all together. Um, and it was a lot of fun. And we taught a class on sculpting fairies or something. And of course, we didn't check the oven in the officer's house. But that's where we had to bake our um, pieces. And of course, the lady who had struggled the most in the class, her piece got toasty roasty. Out of all the people, it was, all, it was her who um, got her piece toasty roasty style. And I was like, oh, crap. But you know what? It actually turned out neat because she did like this chiaroscuro effect you know, um, where you build up li uh, light colors off of a black background. And I doubt she would have done that if her piece wasn't charcoal, charcoal, charcoal-ified. Um, 
So if it, uh, or how they call it, carbonized. Um, but if her piece wasn't uh, toasty roasty, she wouldn't have done that. So sometimes there's happy accidents, even though at the time I was like, I handed her piece and I could see in her heart, it was like, like I had kicked her in her stomach and then like jumped on her throat um, and then uh, kicked her puppy while she's crying. So, um, but it ended up turning out to be one of the best pieces there. So you never know. All right. So basically that's it. So to heat set it, hit it with a heat gun, put it in the oven. Uh, that will really cook it on and make sure that it has a firm adhesion. You can do it in layers too. So if you heat set it, you can always add more paint on top of it or um, use it for another painting surface. So that's the set it and forget method, which I approve of. Now, I probably should have done this first and then let this dry while I'd be talking about Rescue 911. Blast from the past style. Um, and put this and let this dry. So this is gesso. And gesso is, they used to, uh, this is whenever they would make uh, and stretch canvases, um, it's derived from a fresco technique. Um, so what they would do is they would mix lime and uh, calcium carbonate. You can also make your own gesso. Um, it's a very laborious process. So I do not necessarily recommend doing this, especially when you can go on the internet and order it and it gets delivered to your house. Um, but if you're like, oh, I want to do something like the old fashioned way, you can definitely make your own. And usually that it requires taking eggshells and uh, carefully uh, removing the membranes from the dried out eggshells and then uh, grinding it into a powder. And then you have to grind that even more and then you put a binder in it, um, which usually involves boiling a skin of an animal um, to make a glue. And so if you're like, you know, Little House on the Prairie style and, uh, you know, you can't afford the the gesso because because Mary got accident again, um, then you can you can make your own. Um, and it's fun to do at one time. But um, if you have to do it again, you know, then you're like, oh, no, I don't know, Mary, you have to, you know, you have to go work in the field or something so that I can buy some gesso. Um, I like this gesso as sandable hard gesso, which means that when it dries, it dries super rock hard and you can, as the title suggests, sand it. Um, so if you want to have almost like a glass like surface, you can, uh, maybe not glass, maybe like plexiglass. If you want a plexiglass like surface, you can actually achieve that. And what you do is you build up layers, alternating uh, pattern of uh, brush strokes. So when this, this way, let that dry, this way, let that dry, this way, let that dry. And you build those layers up so it's super thick. And then you start at the highest or the lowest grit. So like 120 grit sandpaper, smoothing con even circles. Then you move up a step to like 400 grit or 300 grit and so forth and so on until you get to 2000 grit and you'll get a satin kind of finish. And then you can even go up even higher um, and buff it and use polishing compounds, which I don't know anybody who wants to do that. But if you want to do that, you can do that. If that if that's in your will, you can make it so. But for us today, we're not going to do that because it takes a long, long time. Um, I did a series I thought was going to be quick to flip and make some money for a project we we're working on. And um, uh, I ended up adding all these layers of gesso and um, uh, it didn't it took a long time. So it wasn't quick after all. But before we do this, before we do this, I'm gonna get a sand sandpaper 
Yeah, I'm actually going to close this up so I don't get dust in my gesso. And just lightly go over this. And that's just scuffing the surface to provide a tooth for uh, the paint to adhere to. Um, it's not super necessary, but I do think it helps. And anything you can get to have it stick a little bit firmer, then do it because, uh, at least in my opinion, because it makes your life a lot easier. If you go in with straight acrylics and you try to paint our wooden pendants, it's not gonna work because there's a plasticizer mixed in with the wood because it's a plywood sheet that they're using usually or that we're using usually um so they glue a thin sheet of wood um the hardwood to a like mdf core and um that glue that they use to adhere it is slightly water resistant which is nice because if you aren't going to paint your uh, pendant, then um, it keeps it from, you know, it repels the water. But if your goal is to paint these, then that's opposite of what you want to do. So the the temptation island here of where you're like, I got to, I'm going I'm to, let's cook with the gas and get this done is to add the paint right now. However, there's dust on these pieces. And then when you write to me and say, hey, this is clumpy, it looks like the mascara that from 1972 that got left in the back of the Impala. Um, and it's like the spider, spider leg eyes. Um, yeah, yeah, so that will happen. The dust on this will mix with your, your paints and cause it to clump up. Um, but if you want that texture, cool. But if not, take a, a, a wet, a damp, damp, not wet, and just lightly go over this and wipe off the uh, dust. That way it will adhere nice and smooth and you're not gonna have clumpy, clumpy, clumpy. They're gonna say that paint is smooth, not clumpy. I don't know anybody that's gonna say that. Maybe I would say that, but um, I can't imagine someone going up to your your work and be like so clumpy. It's like uh, it's like the gravy. Who's gonna tell you your your gravy's lumpy? Well, maybe I met some people who would do that. Um, anyway, so take off and uh, take the dry part and dab that. Take off all the excess moisture. You'll notice it has a matte kind of surface to it which is nice and is ready to accept all the gesso that we have to give, well, maybe not all. All right, so we got our gesso and we're gonna make even brush strokes. I say even brush strokes, but you, as you could see, that's not that super even, but you can go back over it and kind of smooth things out in case you get exuberant like me and um there you go so this is how to prep the surface and once this dries um it will you can paint on this with almost anything you want now if you are going to do like watercolors you have to do, add a layer of what's called absorbent ground uh, absorbent ground is a really wonderful medium um, I believe how they make that is they take super fine paper uh, that they've ground down and they mix it in with the a little bit of marble dust. And um, what that does is it makes the painting surface super absorbent, almost like a sheet of watercolor paper. Um, they used to call it pastel ground, and then they may still do that. That's available from Golden uh, Paints. So absorbent ground for watercolors or pastel ground. And the cool thing is, is that if you want, you can do a technique um, where you use salt. And that's how I made these over here. So if you're interested in that flavor, this model texture, I'm a, I'm, I love this thing so much i thought i invented it but apparently somebody in france invented it in like the 1700s but i was um 
uh, shoveling the sidewalk as one does in north or southwestern Pennsylvania during winter. And we had salted our sidewalk and I had noticed that uh, the way that we had a thaw and it got warm and then it got cold. And then you know how it goes here. You wait 10 minutes and the weather changes. Um, but anyway, so the way that it had thawed and refroze and kind of dried out, it had left this kind of really wonderful crystalline structures uh, that had this kind of mottled effect. And what it did is it soaked into, um, soaked up um, some of the, the um the pigment and by the pigment i mean leaves that i should have raked before but didn't and it kind of sucked it up and made this really cool effect so i tried to duplicate that and when i came to realize how to do this effect is i added a layer of gesso prepped this the way it was what i just showed you and then i put a layer of absorbent ground let that dry then i use a lot of uh a, um, washes. So you, to make a wash, all you have to do is add water to your paint and thin it out so that it's a watery consistency. Um, and then, because um, if your paint is too thick, it won't do it. And uh, so if it's too thick, what's going to happen is you're just going to have a salty surface. Um, but you have to have the right ratio. It's too much water and not enough paint, and it won't do anything because there's not enough pigment. But if you get it just right, what's going to happen is it's going to suck up. Um, the salt is going to suck up the water and it's going to dry. And where the salt is, it'll leave a little blank spot and around it will have that kind of cool mottled effect. Um, anyways, so that's how to make that. Let that dry and then sand off the salt. Uh, make sure you wear a dust mask. Otherwise, you're going to have salty boogers. Um, and nobody wants salty boogers. So um, uh, just do that, sand that off, and then wipe it down with um, some water, just like how I showed you with the, um, the cloth there. Um, and then that will take off the residue, and then seal it with some matte medium, and then you're ready to go to paint, and you'll get an effect like that. And you can use multiple colors and get a lot more dramatic effect if you're going to do that. So there you go. Um, June says, I learned about salt in college. Yeah. Uh, I thought I was super clever and came up with it, but apparently um, I'm not. Oh, well. Um, Marianne says, in technical school, I learned that eating a pound of salt will kill you. So uh, don't uh, do that. Sometimes I feel as though I'm on my way when I eat too many potato chips. That I feel that way sometimes. Um, so salty. Um, so anyways. So I'm just going to do these really fast and let these set for later some other time. And then I'll show you some examples of the washes that I did. I was going to do this as a quick video, but apparently... This is not a quick video. So, um, yeah. People are like, where's the cottage tour? This not the cottage. Uh, um, so I'm running late, apparently. Hey, Siri, what time is it? It's 6.07 p.m. So, yeah, I'm really late. So, anyways, so I'm just going to finish this up and... Then I'm going to show you examples of how it will look when you add paint. And then I will um, pack everything up and head to the cottage. So our uh, the tour of Star Cottage Studio is going to be a little bit later than we put on the schedule. I, ha I had myself earmarked for two hours for... Um, the polymer clay, but we might uh, just do one hour um, and I'll, we'll, I'll tag on the extra hour somewhere else. Um, but anyway, so, you know, the schedule, it's in a little bit of flux, but it is what it is. So if you um, hang out here at the GBE, the Great Beat Extravaganza, one of the other presenters is named Christy Friesen. And Christy, she, show, she developed a 
a line of paints called Swelligant and they're patinas, they're true patinas. So they are a chemical reaction with metal. Um, and that's how I did this. I prepped the surface using gesso, but she also has a primer that you can buy. Um, and then you add paint that is, um, that has ground up metal in it. You put a layer down, let that dry, and then you get another let you put another layer of the wet medium or the wet uh, ground up paint or ground up metal paint. And then you spray on or you add your reactive chemical for whatever patina that you're going to do. So if you have the copper one and you add the verdigris, um, it turns like a green color like this. Or if you use the iron one and you use the oxidizer, it will turn like a rust color. Um, and that's, I have a sample. I thought I knew. So anyways, so apparently I got all this stuff ready and I put it next to the door to go and now I can't find it. Anyway, I'll post the pictures of the finished samples of what it looks like when they're done. Um, and there's a lot of cool effects that you can get by adding layers of paint. So if you want to do that, um, I'll add the pictures um, in the comments after sometime tonight. Um, you can also go to our old GBE presentations. They're available in the group. If you go to the group and join the group, it's a private group, so you have to join. Um, they should be available there in the presenta presentation hashtag in, uh, I believe, media. Um, it depends on which one you have, which version of Facebook you have but um, it's either in featured or in presentation. So if you look up the first couple um, presentations that we did, um, I showed how to add and embellish these and we did all the different kinds of techniques. So those are more in depth um, and we went through almost like it's on fire. We did like 20 different techniques in one of the videos. So basically I did one maybe two, three. I talked about three here. So there you go. All right. So William just got home. So we're going to head over to the cottage. So we're going to do the tour of Star Cottage Studio. Let's push everything up an hour. I think William... I don't know if you can hear me or not. Let, let's meet up at seven for the um, for the 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 tour of Star Cottage Studio because that'll give me enough time to run over there um, and and get everything ready. All right, so I'll see you back here at seven o'clock. Um, if your friends are watching. Tell your friends uh, that we'll be doing the, uh, the tour of Star Cottage Studio at 7. All right. See you then.